This is my seventh video lesson for the unit Atomic Theory. We'll be talking about the bright light spectrum. So go to page 27 in the class packet. For the motivation, I want you to think about how do firework works. Learning target. At the end of the lesson, I'll be able to analyze bright light spectra and describe how is it created. The homework number seven is a junipod based off of this lesson. The second exam will be on the atomic theory unit. So there'll be one more PowerPoint before that exam. But let's first review the ground state and excited state models. So here we have an atom in the ground state, an electron in the ground state absorbs some energy, it jumps to a higher energy level, that atom is now in excited state. Here we're talking about the same atom, the same electron, if that electron releases energy, it falls back to a lower energy level, which is the ground state. So check of understanding number one. Compare and contrast the energy that the electron gains to the energy the electron loses. So if we compare both models, the energy should be the same. Learning check number one. An electron in the sodium atom gains enough energy to move from the second shell to the third shell. The sodium atom becomes what? So pause the video and resume once you have the answer. So the answer is free. Atom in the excited state. Learning check number two. When an excited electron in the atom moves to a ground state, the electron does what? Pause the video and resume once you have the answer. So since it's an excited electron, it moves back to the ground state, it must have lost energy. Okay, so one and two are wrong. So it must go to a lower energy state, right? Because ground state is the lowest possible energy. So the answer is four. So now let's discuss a bright light spectrum. First, I want you to watch a video about the bright light spectrum. The link to the video will be in the description. Pause this video and resume once you're done. Okay, so assume everybody has watched the video. Let's go over how does a bright light spectrum work. Here we have a discharge tube containing hydrogen gas. We're going to heat up this tube until the atoms are excited. Once they're excited, they eventually return back to the ground state. And when they do that, they release energy in forms of light. The light passes through this prism, eventually creating a spectrum right, of hydrogen gas in this example. We'll be doing this in lab. So what's the purpose of making the spectrum? So it is used to identify elements, right, like a fingerprint, since each element will have a unique spectrum. Spectra is plural for spectrum. Here's another diagram showing the production of the helium bright light spectrum. In this GIF emanation, it is showing the production of the hydrogen bright light spectrum. So this spectrum has four lines. Each line represents the energy release from the electron when it goes from a high energy level to a lower energy level. Okay. So N stands for the energy level in the atom. So you can see the electron, when it goes from a high energy level to a lower energy level, energy is released and is recorded onto this bright light spectrum. So this is a GIF. You can watch this as many times as you want on my PowerPoint. So here's an example of a bright light spectrum. So on the regions, they will ask you to predict what elements are in the mixture. Keep in mind, different elements have different spectrum. In order for an element to be in the mixture, all of their lines must be in the mixture, not just one, okay? So you could probably do this while even knowing what a bright light spectrum is. Just match the lines and make sure all the lines of the element are in the mixture. For example, notice that cadmium has these two lines here but we don't see it in the mixture. So obviously, cadmium is not in the mixture. If we do the same thing for lithium and strontium, you notice that lithium and strontium are in the mixture. So this mixture is showing lithium and strontium atoms. So for hydrogen's bright light spectrum, each line represents where the electron jumped from, okay? Learning check number three. 
Given the bright light spectrum of three elements and a spectrum of mixture formed from at least two of these elements, which elements are present in the mixture? So try this yourself, pause the video, and resume once you have the answer. But the answer is one. So again, in order for it to be in the mixture, all the lines of the element must be in the mixture. For example, for G, these lines are not in the mixture, right? None of these are, okay? So therefore, G is not in the mixture. So if we do the same for D and E, you notice that all these lines are in this mixture. Therefore, the answer is one. Learning check number four, which of these elements are in this mixture? So I'll pause the video and resume once you have the answer. Notice for this regions question, they are attempting to trick you by offsetting the spectrum on purpose, right? So it's very easy to get tricked. For example, you might think these two lines are referring to these two lines, but they're not. How do you know that? You check the wavelengths. So whenever you come across a question like this, check the wavelength to make sure they line up. Notice that these two lines are very close to 750, while these two lines are between 700 and 650. So obviously, these two lines are not the same as these two lines. So X is obviously not in there. Now for Z, Z has a line close to 700, which is present here, right? So Z must be there. Okay, let's check D. D has two lines between 600 and 550. We don't see that here. So D cannot be in there, right? So it must be Z and A. So another way to check your answer is to add up all the lines of A and Z it should equal the total number of lines in the mixture, okay? For example, A has four and Z has five. So we should get nine lines in the mixture, which there is. So the answer is two. Learning check number five. The atoms in a sample of an element are in the excited state. A bright light -like spectrum is produced when these atoms do what? So pause the video and resume once you have the answer. So since they are in an excited state, they must go back to the ground state and release energy in forms of light in order for it to produce a bright light spectrum. So it must emit energy, choice free. So just to review, each element has their own unique spectrum. So now we're going to talk about the motivation. So hopefully you got the chance to think about how firework works, right? So basically, Fireworks works the same way as the bright light spectrum, right? So when the fireworks explode, right, the atoms in the rocket uh, become excited. Then they go back to the ground state, releasing energy in forms of light, okay? And that light can come in different wavelengths. That's why they're different colors. Now we're going to talk about the flame test. It's an analytical technique used to identify metal ions based off the color of the flame. Okay, so if you attended Stuyvesant's open house two years ago, you would have seen this experiment. We will also do this experiment in lab. It basically works the same as the bright light spectrum and the fireworks. Basically, the color of the flame is formed when electrons in the cytostate state returns to the ground state. That releases energy and forms a light. The light comes in different wavelengths. That's why there's different color depending on the element. So neon lights work the same way as the flame test, as the bright light spectrum, and the fireworks. Why is glass transparent? So I want you to pause this video and watch a TED video about glass. It is related to the ground state and excited state. Okay, so resume this video once you watched it. Now I want you to do the five questions as practice. So pause this video and resume once you have the answers. Okay. So here's the answer for number one is helium and hydrogen. For number two is a region free response question. Notice you see the in terms of, right? So you have to mention these concepts somewhere in your answer. So this is the long answer, right? If you write this, you'll be given full credit. Here is a short and concise answer that will also give you full credit. When electrons in excited state return to the ground state, which releases energy as light. This will be an acceptable answer on the regions. 
When electrons of an excited atom returns to a lower energy state, the energy emitted can result in a production of what? The inferior spectra. Question number five is also a region sphere response. So for A, it's asking about the same thing as question number two. So the regions like asking this type of question, so make sure you can answer it, okay? For question B, it's asking how can you identify the element present at the star? So basically, you could compare the spectrum from the star with the spectra of known elements. And the next page is an extension. This extension will not be on the regions exam, but you might see these concepts on the SAT2 chemistry. So let's start with the first term, electromagnetic radiation. So here are some examples of electromagnetic radiation. They're basically forms of energy with wave-like behavior. So frequency, and this is a symbol frequency, it looks like a V, is the number of waves per second. So notice that gamma has a very high frequency compared to radio, which has a relatively low frequency. The unit of frequency is hertz. The next term is wavelength, which is the symbol lambda. So it's the distance between adjacent waves and is measured in nanometers. Notice that radio waves are long while gamma waves are short. Right? So you may notice there's an inverse relationship between wavelength and frequency. The longer the wavelength, the shorter the frequency. The shorter the wavelength, the longer the frequency. So wavelength and frequency are related to, to each other through this equation. So you can see they're inverse of each other. You multiply both of them, you get the speed of light. Okay? So how is energy related to wavelength? So energy is equal to the Planck constant times the speed of light over lambda. So the constants are over here. H is the Planck constant and C is the speed of light. So based off this equation, are they inverse or directly related? They are inverse related. Which color light has the highest wavelength, the highest energy? So remember, wavelength and energy are inverse related. So let's look at the visible light spectrum, right? As you can see here, red has the highest wavelength, right? And violet has the highest energy. So let's do one example before concluding this lesson. Light with a wavelength of 525 nanometer is green. Calculate the energy in joules for the green light photon. So this is the problem solving strategy, right? So here we're given wavelength. So let's look at strategy number two. So we have convert from wavelength to frequency to energy, okay? So you can try to do this yourself. Pause the video and resume once you have the answer. Okay, so here's the answer. Let's start with frequency. So frequency is equal to the speed of light over wavelengths. So speed of light is a constant. So notice it's meters per second. You must convert the nanometers of the wavelength to meters. So this is the conversion factor. If you do that, you get frequency equals to this. Now that we have frequency, we can plug it into this equation to solve for energy. If we do that, it will be frequency times Planck's constant and this will be our energy. So this concludes the video lesson for today. Remember to do the Junipon homework. You can practice more questions on the following pages.